It is true that generating images is the bread and butter for modern AI. There are hundreds of image generators out there, all with their unique features. This makes it super hard to choose the right image generator for your exact needs. But in this video, I'm gonna tell you about the best AI image generators that I've tried and explain why they're so good. The last place in our rating is taken up by Gen Pictures. Trust me, I've never seen a more simplistic image generator in my life. The whole interface consists of four elements, input field, a button for generation, and a window where the generated image will be. After the image is generated, the fourth element appears below it, a button for downloading. Using Gen Pictures is incredibly easy. Everything is set up in such a way that even an infant could figure it out. I just type in the prompt and hit one button, that's all. There are no more controls, no option to choose a model, to specify the resolution or aspect ratio, absolutely nothing. You type in the prompt and get the result, no questions asked. Some people might say that it's too simplistic to be convenient, but I think that for someone who just doesn't care about all the particularities of image generation, this is pretty much the perfect option. If one day your relative comes to you and asks to show them an image generator, you can send them to Gen Pictures and spare yourself from the burden of explaining to them which button does what. Also, I hope you notice that Gen Pictures generates images super fast much faster than other generators and by a considerable margin. Gen Pictures is great, love it, though I'd say that limiting users to only three images until needing a subscription is a bit too aggressive, but hey, the simplicity often costs extra. Gen Pictures gets six for the quality of generation and 10 for the speed and performance. Now, I know we're talking about image generation here, but I can't not tell you about a great AI that I found, Isus Vocal Remover, the sponsor of today's video. In just a few clicks, I can take any song and separate the music and the vocals into separate files. There are two ways to do it. One, upload the file, then AI will do everything by itself. It will analyze the audio and masterfully separate vocals and instruments. The second way is to paste a link to a video and AI will do the rest. Isus Vocal Remover works with both video and audio files and extract vocals from any media file you import and export them too. The quality of separation is crazy, like it just connected itself to the recording studio where the song was recorded, it's that good. Isus Vocal Remover supports many file formats such such as MP4, MOV, MP3, WAVE, M4A, FLAG, and more. And it also supports many types of separation. Drums, bass, piano, voice, and noise can be separated from music and vocals without losing quality. Whether you're making music professionally, creating songs, or just want to make great karaoke tracks or background music, this tool is for you. For me, it's a great way to spice up my videos with new tunes without having to manually tune down the vocals and editing. It's simple, fast, and wildly effective. I will leave a link in the description, so be sure to check it out. You should also check out Crayon, and the main reason for that is its simplicity. Crayon is one of the most bare-bone and straightforward image generators out there. With Crayon, the whole process is super simple. I just open the website and see a simplistic interface. There is the prompt window where you type in your request and describe the image. Below that, Crayon allows four style options, art, photo, drawing, and none. So I'm gonna start with something simple. German Shepherd in space. I leave a style at default as well. What I find interesting is that in the bottom there is the inspirations tab where all the related or similar images are. This way we can see roughly the results we could count for. Crayon usually takes about 40 seconds to generate the images but gives a bunch of them at once. The style is artsy but not too overwhelming. Below the style selection part there is a so-called expert mode menu where I can type in everything that shouldn't be in the picture. Sometimes Crayon seems to drop down the resolution, but that's not an issue because under each image there is a special upscale button. The images at high res look much, much better, and the best part is that Crayon spits out a ton of images real fast. I think it takes way less time to generate 10 images in Crayon than takes something like Midjourney to generate four. So yeah, if you're just starting your image generation journey and want to learn the ropes without paying a dime, Crayon is definitely the best place to start. No 
subscription fees, no convoluted controls, and really fast generation. I'd say that the quality of generated images gets a six from me, but the performance is definitely nine. The next image generator takes a different approach. Desktalker AI first requires you to upload the base image and all the generation happens on top of that. I know this might not sound like a useful thing, but if you, for example, find an interesting stock image that you would like to use, but don't want to pay for the price, you can just turn it into an AI in seconds. Here's how it works. First, I upload the image. This one I honestly downloaded from the web. Below the image, there is an input field where I can type in all of the changes I want to make. For example, I can ask Deathstalker to change the suit to bathrobe. Then there are three more parameters for me to customize. Structure control indicates how closely the generated image should be to the original one. Color control does the same thing, but in terms of colors. The last option is choosing a style. Deathstalker has many styles to choose from, but I think the photorealistic looks the best, at least for my purposes. I would also like to say that unfortunately, it is not a fast AI. AI. It takes some time to generate an image. However, as you can say, the end result is quite good. Deathstalker has indeed changed the suit into bathrobe and did it splendidly. Also, it didn't destroy the face or fingers, which is quite typical for AI to do. At any moment, you can change the prompt, adjust the controls or pick a different style. Right now, there are nine styles to choose from, and even if I switch it from realistic to cinematic, the result still looks great. For you, it's seconds, but I had to sit and wait for the image to generate for three minutes or so. Deathstalker is definitely not the best out there, but it's definitely a very interesting one. Can do some things really diligently, but completely ignore other things. For example, it took this white dude and turned him into a female of a different skin color for some reason. It changed only the face, not the hand, and luckily, the interface is really simple, and at least for now, the generation is free. If I was to assign points, I'd say that Deathstalker does a solid job at generating images, 7 out of 10, but the performance is pretty subpar, 3 out of 10. Another image generator that's definitely worth checking out is Kriya AI. This one is a bit more advanced and it has one super cool feature that makes it perfect for those of you who have a clear vision but cannot fully express it with the words. Maybe prompt engineering is hard for you, maybe you just have a really specific artistic vision. With Kriya AI you can literally just draw vague shapes of what you want to get and AI will fill in the rest. That's why the interface is divided into two halves. The left one is for us to draw and the right one is for the AI. Below that there is a prompt in the window that helps AI better interpret what it's supposed to be drawing. Near the prompt box there is a button that generates a random seed and it basically changes the look of the image randomly. There is a menu on the right with five style options. No style, cinematic, illustration, bloom and product. Cinematic style adds nice bokeh, illustration for no reason changes nothing. Bloom makes it all glowy and blurred and product looks just like your typical product photo. If you want to make the images more or less inventive, there is a special slider to the right of the prompt box that adjusts the strength of AI. You can see how images change in real time as I drag it up and down. This double canvas thing is seriously cool, but if you're looking for something a bit more traditional, Korea AI also has a text to image mode. But in my opinion, it isn't that great. Korea might not be the most accurate in terms of generated imagery, and the images themselves may not be of the highest quality. But this draw with me feature is something that you don't see in other AI image generators. It makes it super easy to turn your fantasies into full fledged images. Sometimes the AI guesses everything correctly, sometimes it misses its shot, but Korea AI at least makes it easy to control the framing and positioning of the elements in your image. The next AI that I'm going to recommend is called Night Cafe, and it's pretty cool. Night Cafe has a few important features that make it more advanced than everything that came before, like the ability to evolve generated images, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. The interface looks quite alright, and the menu on the left allows me to change the model that I would like to use. 
there are quite a few models to choose from, each with its own quirks. SDXL 1.0 or Stable Diffusion model is selected by default, but you can always switch it to Dolly 3 Creative Upscaler or Dream Shaper XL Lightning. Night Cafe also allows users to train custom models, which is something you rarely see in image generators. Below that, there is a text prompt window, and below that is an option to choose a style. There are many, many styles to choose from, from artistic and anime to CGI and epic. The list of styles goes on and on, enough to generate basically anything. Also, Night Cafe allows me to specify the number of images I want to generate, the runtime, and the aspect ratio. With the default settings, each image costs one credit to generate, and all free users get five credits. The math says it's enough for only five images, but there is another model that costs half a credit, which means everyone can generate up to 10 images. I cannot say that with the default model, all results are perfect, but they are definitely not too shabby. With the obscure and weird prompts, the results can be just as weird as the prompts themselves. For example, I asked for ice cream warriors, but Night Cafe just gave me an Italian street with an ice cream in the middle of it. After some additional tweaking of the prompt, it did get things right. So if you really want to make the best out of Night Cafe, then you have to know at least some prompt engineering. At the bottom of each generated image, there is a DNA-like button, which lets you evolve the image using the same seed. Seed is the parameter that users rarely see, but it determines the style of the image. Also, it's overall structure and composition, so when I click on this DNA button, Night Cafe lets me change the model, the prompt, style, and a few other parameters. This is a great feature if you want your new image to convey the same emotions and framing as the original image, which in my case works great. Night Cafe is definitely a very interesting image generator and with enough time, could be a very powerful ally. As far as this course go, I'd rate it seven for the quality of generation images and eight for the speed. The next AI is the one you've probably already heard about, Leonardo. And this AI has a few cool tricks up its sleeve. One, it lets you precisely customize the image and its parameters, such as resolution, aspect ratio, and so on. And the second trick is exactly why Leonardo is on this list in the first place, it uses unusual models. Mine is set to Dream Shaper V7, and if you're an AI enthusiast, you know this is important. But I don't wanna dive deep into the parameters right now because you, my friends, are most likely looking for a simple way to generate images. There's also a drop-down menu for picking a style of the image, and Leonardo also does a really good job at crisp upscaling. Clicking on the DNA-like icon will make AI redraw the image and add more textures to it, more details. There's one more cool thing about Leonardo. It has a built-in prompt generator that helps you write better prompts. You just switch to prompt generation, type a prompt as usual, then hit ideate. AI will suggest a few better ways for any given prompt, and each suggested variant can be easily modified. This feature makes it super convenient for newcomers to learn prompt engineering. Leonardo is really just a simple and straightforward image generator with hidden potential. If you want, you can tap into that potential and create truly amazing stuff, but if not, it's just a nice and consistent image generator. Six for the quality of images, eight for performance and convenience. There are so many image generators out there as you can see, but the next one is kind of special. Hot Pot might seem like a very simple and straightforward tool, but what it does differently is the financial side of things. All previous AI tools were only partially free and required a subscription after a couple of generated images. Hot Pot, on the other hand, doesn't require any money for any amount of generated images unless you're using the premium models. But honestly, you don't even need them anyway. Using HotPod is super easy. You just type in a prompt, pick a style, upload a seed image if needed, choose the number of images and the aspect ratio of them. And that's all. From my testing, I can say that it's not the best generator in terms of following the prompt, but sometimes it can produce really interesting results. For example, this image of a fisherman in a boat looks really nice. Even though I asked HotPod to show me the sea of dumplings, 
I'm telling you, it's not about fooling around or generating some weird stuff. It's like your typical no-nonsense guy. And again, you can use it absolutely for free however long you like. And that, if you ask me, is a worthy advantage to put it that high on the list. For the quality of generated images, I'd say it's about six, but the overall performance is a solid eight. GenCraft is another interesting image generator that you should check out. I feel that it can be somewhat overwhelming for new users, but if you're already familiar with image generators, you will figure it out fairly easily. It all starts with a prompt window where I can just type whatever I want. Then I choose the style of the image. This isn't an unusual feature, but you may like the styles that it supports. For example, I never saw a diorama where Yukio e style. As for the model selection, only five models are available for free, but these models are different enough in the way they generate images. Also, each of them has a certain number of likes and an indicator that shows how many images were generated with this particular model. In advanced settings, there are just two things, a place for the negative prompt and an option to choose the aspect ratio. What I also like is the built-in prompt improver. With just one click, I can turn very simple prompt into a detailed one, which is very convenient. However, I must say, GenCraft isn't very well suited for imitating the styles of existing media, because no matter how many times I try to make it imitate the SpongeBob style, it never does it. Even if I change the model, the results stay basically the same. I think GenCraft is a pretty good image generator with all the basic functionality that you need, interest in model selection, an unusual variety of styles. It surely needs some polishing, but even in its current state, it's fairly impressive. There's just one problem. For free, we can generate only five prompts, which is really unfortunate. I would rate it uh, seven for the quality and seven for the performance. Now we're stepping into the advanced generators territory and among them, Adobe Firefly definitely has the coolest tricks. Typically, when a person opens an AI image generator, he is greeted with a simple prompt window, just like we had in some of the previous examples. But Adobe went further than that and created a special special menu makes it a piece of cake to customize the image as you please. And this is a fantastic thing to do if you're trying to buy the piece of the market. All image controls are on the right side and there are a lot of controls. First, aspect ratio. Then there is content type, photo or art. Firefly can choose it automatically, but I suggest you to turn that off and choose yourself. Visual intensity controls the level of complexity and detail in the images. Firefly also lets you upload a photo for AI to steal the style from. So if you're trying to replicate someone's artwork, this is a perfect way to do it. But next comes the most interesting part, effects. Adobe made sure to include a ton of different effects that we can just pick and choose, no prompting needed. We can choose a style like cyberpunk or baroque, choose a theme, lighting, and so on. We can pick individual characteristics of the photo, like bokeh, for example. This is by far the easiest way to set the image just the way you want it to be. And the best part is that Adobe not just picked the words, but actually trained their model on these styles and effects. Below that, there's three additional menus color and tone, lighting and composition. I'm gonna choose toned image, harsh light and close-up. Firefly really is one of the best tools for photorealistic image generation and all thanks to the way the model was trained. Adobe didn't just use the artwork, they used tons of stock photos, which allows Firefly to be particularly good at generating people and their faces. But it also has limitations. For example, Firefly doesn't want to generate anything disturbing, I guess the developers want to preserve the reputation of an always positive image generator. I don't know. Oh, and there are two more submenus. Photo settings lets me choose the aperture of the camera, the shutter speed, and the field of view. And in advanced settings, I can type in all the stuff that I don't want to see in the final images. Firefly gets 10 for the quality and solid 9 for performance. And if I was to rate its convenience and user friendliness, I'd give it 20 out of 10. But since this is my list of AI image generators, I get to decide which one is the best. And for me, after rigorous testing and frequent everyday use, 
I can confidently say that Dolly is the best AI image generator that I could recommend. Calm down, don't get angry, I have my reasons. First, it is included in GPT Plus subscription, making it by far the most affordable choice for anyone who already uses ChatGPT on a daily basis. Second, it is the most consistent in its results. Three, the results themselves are great. But let me just show you how it all looks and works. Unlike previous AI tools, Dolly generates only one image at a time. So if you wanna see multiple variations, you'll have to either ask for it or regenerate repetitively. Show me geese save in Rome. Seems like an interesting place to start. But in my case, it just refuses to generate. Well, not a big deal. I will wait a bit and try again. And now we're talking. I do quite like this image. It's quite epic, full of drama with nice colors and lighting, it's the quality of generation that all AIs should aim at. The only major downside about Dolly is that unlike Firefly, it doesn't have that convenient panel with parameters and controls. Everything is done through chat. However, Dolly doesn't have limitations for copyright protected stuff. A bit of a trade-off, but I can live with that. But where Dolly really shines is with artistic images, the ones with a story behind them. Show me a National Geographic style image of a rhinoceros with a little hummingbird sitting in its horn near the river with crocodiles in it. And just look at it. It's basically something from a magazine. If Firefly was about realism and convenience, then Dolly is all about artistic vision and sticking to the prompt. It's basically like a Swiss knife, can do everything, but all of that complexity is hidden behind a slick and intuitive interface. Dolly is a solid 10 across the board, both for the quality and the performance. Some people might say that my list is unoriginal or uninventive, but let me remind you that we're looking for the best generators out there and not the most unique or unusual ones. If you want the best results, you have to stick to the big guys. And by the way, if you want to know what the big guys are preparing for 2024, be sure to watch a recent video about scary AI breakthroughs that are just around the corner. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.